All right, Pastor Vern here. I'm at Appalachian State in Boone, North Carolina at uh, Founders Plaza doing a little preaching and Bible reading today. There's not a huge number of people around, but we've been out here for about an hour and I would say uh, I don't know. There's been dozens and dozens of students who have passed by and heard the scripture. Uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of foot traffic here. Uh, you know, these places back here, you know, where folks walking around back here, they're able to hear the word of God today. So, uh, just keep us in your prayers. Some folks are hearing the gospel today. God bless you. We appreciate you for praying. All right, my name is Pastor Vern Hall. We're here from the Free Gift Gospel Mission in Kingsport, Tennessee. We came to give you the good news today that your sins may be forgiven. We're going to read some scripture now from 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse number 10. Hear the word of the Lord from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them the Lord delivered me. Out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by God, given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished, unto all good works. We have good news to bring today, and that is the good news that your sins may be forgiven because of a love for self and a love for this world. Many people today reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. They will pass by and turn a deaf ear to the gospel of Jesus Christ which is the only message today that will help anybody. Man's opinions will not help. Philosophies and ideologies of this world will help no one today. The only message that will help anybody is the gospel of Jesus Christ. But many reject the gospel today out of a love for self and a love for this world. And many will even persecute the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may pass by today, my dear friend, and say, well, I would never do that. But the effects of sin have nonetheless affected your life. The effects of sin affect all people in this world because we live in a fallen world. The Bible teaches us that by one man's disobedience, Many were made sinners. The Bible teaches us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none good, no, not one, according to the book of Romans. So we see that we live in a fallen world. Sin's effects are all around, but there is a remedy. And that remedy is none other than Jesus Christ and Him alone who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father 
but by me. Christ is the remedy today. A holy God has power to forgive sins today. We've all sinned, we've all broken the law of God, and we all stand in need of a Savior. The Word of God teaches us very clearly that there is one true and living God, and it's the God of the Christian Bible. He said, I am God, and besides me there are no other gods. And this one true and living God created all things. And He upholds all things by the word of His power. He is the Creator. He created men and women in His image and in His likeness. And this one true and living God who is the Creator, He is just, He is righteous, he is holy, and because He is just and righteous and holy, He must punish sin. Sin has entered into this world. As we've already stated, we live in a fallen, sin-cursed world. And a just and righteous God must punish sin. And the just punishment that God has prescribed for sin is an eternity in an awful place called hell. But there is good news today. The gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the good news. News is something that's worthy of being reported. When we turn on the network news or the local news, we see news anchors on television. We hear them on the radio. They are giving information called news. They consider it to be worthy of reporting. The gospel of Jesus Christ is worthy of reporting. But it's the good news. It's good not only because it makes people happy, not only because it brings about a temporal happiness, but it's good because it's the only message that can bring about eternal and everlasting joy. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul took a snapshot of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Now we know that the gospel is the whole story. It's the whole message of our Savior. But Paul said this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures and that He was seen of Cephas then of the twelve. After that He was seen of above five hundred brethren at once of whom the greater part remained unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. So what Paul is testifying of here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is the good news that Christ has came and died and rose again. But he didn't stop with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He went on to proclaim that Christ after His resurrection was seen of more than 500 brethren. More than 500 witnesses saw the resurrected Christ. Paul's readers would have understood that Paul was saying, I'm giving you news. I'm testifying unto you of things that are testable and things that are provable. Paul is saying, I am giving you facts that are provable. 
Don't take my word for it. You don't have to take my word for it. You can go and ask these witnesses yourselves. Some of them have fallen asleep, but there are some who are still alive. And Paul is saying these are witnesses who have witnessed the resurrected Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ came, He died, He rose again, He ascended back up to heaven, and His return is imminent. And we need to be ready. The Bible testifies of this good news of the Gospel. News that is worthy of being reported. It's the good news that Christ has come. Born of a virgin. Made under the law to redeem them which were under the curse of the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And Christ, being fully God and fully man, he lived a perfect life. He walked in this world for 33 years and He never committed not one sin in thought, word, or deed. It makes no difference what the History Channel says. Christ, my dear friend, was sinless. He never committed one sin. Not even one. And He went to the cross of Calvary and there offered Himself as a perfect sacrifice for the sins of many. And there He shed His blood and His blood ran down the cross. For without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness, there is no remission of sins. Christ's death on the cross paid the atoning price. His sacrifice satisfied the wrath of God on behalf of sinful people like you and me. His sacrificial and vicarious death on the cross was a perfect sacrifice. But He did not stay on the cross. He did not stay dead. On the third and appointed day, He rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And by His resurrection, we are justified if we have trusted in Christ and Him alone. Because He lives, we shall live also. And what God requires of you, and what God requires of me, and what God requires of all people is that we repent and believe the Gospel. That we turn aside from a life of sin. That we turn away from sin and look to Christ and Him alone. Not to some celebrity, not to a sports star or a professor or a theologian or a philosopher, but Christ and Him alone. Look to Christ and live. And when you turn from sin and you turn to Christ alone and you place your faith and trust in Him, you find Jesus Christ to be a perfect Savior. Jesus Christ today, my dear friend, is a perfect Savior. It's Him that we testify of today. It's Him that we proclaim in this place. If you don't know Him in a saving way, look to Christ and live. Turn from sin and turn to Christ. At a time appointed by the Father's choosing, Jesus Christ will come again. And we need to be ready. We must repent and believe the Gospel. We hope you have a wonderful day. Trust Jesus Christ and Him alone. And may God bless you and thank you for listening.